Hey guys, Brian Hilliard here, author of the best-selling book, Networking Like a Pro, and you are listening to Practice Builder Law. And we have got a great guest lined up here for you guys today. We have got Katie Lawson from the law office of Katie Lawson, and uh, she's going to be joining us and talking a little bit about marketing and what it is that she does. Um, Katie, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me, Brian. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, one of the things that I always like to ask guests kind of right mm -hmm. off the bat is tell us a little bit about your, your practice. This. Tell us a little bit about the area that you work in. That way people can kind of get a feel for the type of lawyering okay. that you do and, and what's that all about? Well, the short answer of what I do is that I help individuals mm -hmm. and businesses get out of trouble and stay out of trouble with Uncle Sam. Oh. I am a tax attorney. Okay. Uh, my firm focuses primarily on tax controversy. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what tax controversy is, is that if an individual or a business come to my firm and they owe a uh, enormous amount to the IRS. Right. We help them to settle those tax debt. Right. Those tax debts. Right. Excuse me. No. Uh, we also uh, do return preparation. Okay. And also uh, tax consulting. Okay. So if you are a business client and right. you're noticing huge income tax bills each and every year, right. what we do is that we review your tax returns uh, and also your business entity's classification okay. and we determine whether or not you need to um, find or need to transition into another business entity classification right. and we also uh, help you find more deductions for yourself and your business as well. That we also awesome. do that on an individual level. Okay. Uh, we uh, we actually review individual tax returns to okay. make sure they're optimizing all of their deductions, right. and credits, right. exemptions, right. Uh, and so forth. If they're not, then we make recommendations as far as uh, the types of credits that they will need to take, how they can take more deductions, and right. how they can actually uh, have more exemptions on their tax returns. That is awesome. I mean, that's a lot of good stuff. I think, you know, when we we, you know, we've known each other for a little while yes. now, and I think that the biggest thing when I hear you talk, it's helping people out. You know, if they have a tax controversy, yes, it's avoiding that exactly. potential tax controversy with people. You know, that's the consulting and stuff like that that you kind of mentioned. And there's an optimization component to it exactly. that you mentioned before, which is here's how you can squeeze the most out of what it is that you're doing. Exactly. So, so that's awesome. Um, tell us a little bit about because one of the things that you know we talk a lot about on the show is is marketing. Okay, and a lot of lawyers, um, there's different schools of thoughts on different things on how to market and how to get the word out yes. about your practice. Tell us a little bit about what you have done. Um, you know, I know you do some networking or whatever. Yes. Give us, give us a feel for what you've done. Um, and it's funny you mentioned those schools of thoughts. You have the old school attorneys and right. you have the new school attorneys. Right. The old school attorneys um, are used to the in-face, in in-person networking. Mm -hmm. uh, they believe in going out and uh, be becoming a rainmaker, mm -hmm. networking in the community, in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. in the different businesses. And they rely solely on in-person networking to right. build their practices. Right, right. Uh, you have some new attorneys that are on the uh, the other end of the, the, the spectrum. Which might be some of our listeners and yes. viewers. Yeah. And they tend to focus heavily on social media, uh, uh, website uh, optimization, mm -hmm. um, things that are very impersonal. Mm -hmm. Um, what I find that works for myself and my firm mm -hmm. is a mix between the two. An integration of An sorts. An integration of sorts. Yeah. Um, I, I do believe that as attorneys, we do need social media. We do need right. the, the web presence right. because, let's face it, we're in the age right. of, um, we're in the age, we're in the age of uh, social media networking. Right. So you do need a social media presence. You do need a web presence because right. most likely, uh, people are most likely to Google you. Right. Before they actually pick up a pick up the phone and actually call your office. Well, you know, I mean, it's kind of stop you just for a second yes. because you know one of the points that I've made is that they might have heard about you exactly while you're going out and about. But here's the thing: they check you out mm -hmm. online. I mean, what do you think about that? I've had clients that have actually came to my office. Mm -hmm. They said that a, a former client referred me, right? But 
they've checked me out themselves. And, and they, they use that term. The, yeah, the web, and they use that term yeah. specifically, yeah, but yeah. I've checked you out. Right. I've checked your website. Right. I've checked your LinkedIn. Right. I've checked your social media. Right. I've checked you out before right. I came in. That's exactly yeah. right. And, yeah. I, and I think a lot of times social media and, and just online marketing in general, you know, whatever, I think it almost, it's, it's a, it's a uh, what is the term? When you have it, it's, it's kind of like a um, yin and yang. That's what I'm exactly. trying to think of it. Where, you know, you've got your offline you know, stuff where you're yes. meeting people because they still need to put a face to the name. Of course. Right? But then I also still think that the, the, the online marketing comes in, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but the online marketing comes in where people, again, checking you out. Exactly. And, and it's almost like there's very few things that people still believe, okay? The newspaper and the website. Yes. 90% of what you read in the newspaper, you'll believe, maybe even more, <laughs> okay? And... Probably about 90% of what you see on a website. I'm not talking about on a website. Okay, you'll believe it. And that's exactly correct. And that's exactly correct. And that's uh, one of the uh, most important um, aspects that you need to make sure that your information on your website is, mm-hmm. is accurate. So what do you put um, on your stuff, if you don't mind us asking? What do you, what um, do? You do? What do you like on your either your website? I mean, you don't have to give away the secret formula, but, no. but a little bit. What do you, what do you, what do you put on there? I actually like to, uh, well, I have my practice areas on there. I also mm. have a little bit about my education and background. Which is smart. Um, and those are the two main components. I want them to see what I do. Mm-hmm. And I also want them, want the uh, people to see that I am qualified mm-hmm. to do what I, what I do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So those are the things that, that people look for in looking for an attorney. They want to know that you have some experience mm-hmm. in the type of law that, uh, that you're putting yourself out as practicing. Mm-hmm. What another great point, because how many times, and this isn't just, I'm not picking on lawyers, by the way, you know, whatever. I do a lot of work with other areas, as you probably know. And one of the things that I find is that people, on, they don't make it easy or clear online, usually in person too, but we're talking online right now, easy or clear for people to quickly understand what the heck they do. You know what I mean? So when you talked about right off the bat that you do areas of um, practice, I think yes. you said, you know, you had it pretty clear, I guess, on your on your site. Yes. That's a, that's a great tip because a lot of times I say, especially if you're a new, you know, just kind of coming into it, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but if you're a, a new person coming in, you know, the five thousand or the three thousand dollar site is fine, but make sure on your home page that you, you know you've got that ready to go, and that the information is clear and right. concise. And don't just list the practice areas. Okay. Give, give descriptions. Oh. Give descriptions, and I do include a brief description okay. in my practice areas to let uh, uh, people know that right. this is what this entails. Right. Right. That's awesome. Now, let me, let's go into the elephant in the room with marketing, okay? When it comes to lawyers and, and kind of the marketing deal, what's the first thing they say? Well, I can't, you know, market to, what, what is it? I can't market to people who I, I can't solicit. I yeah, can't solicit. I can't solicit. I can't solicit. And define it, define it for us. What is, is, not to put you on the spot, but soliciting would be what? When they are? When you're going up directly to a person mm-hmm. and says, I can help you. Here's my card. Right. Call me. Okay. We cannot do that. Right. You cannot um, do that. It's it's called the ambulance chaser. You right. can't chase an ambulance and just start handing Literally. out cards right. to right. everyone. Right. 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 Uh, so that's the ambu- the ambulance chaser theory. We right. cannot do that whatsoever. But you can. But we can belong to networking networking groups. You can do in person networking because at that particular point you're not selling yourself. Uh, as an attorney, you're not selling any type of services. You're actually just getting to know people. And and that's an important point because with this the solicitation piece, the ambulance chaser, you are directly working with somebody, soliciting them for a service that they exactly. need in the present. Exactly. Versus when you network, what you're doing is building a relationship for a future exactly. business. And that's a lot of people. I can't tell you how many times people. Oh, Brian. You know, I can't do this networking thing because you know, it's against my, uh, you know, I mean, they get all like, you know, whatever. Yeah. And and that's not the case. That's not the case. And at all. for me, it's it's really getting to know people. Right. And a lot of the individuals that I've networked with, a lot of the groups that I actually attend. Right. Um, 
I normally do not get the clients out of those groups, right, but right. I get friends of those people that are in the group right. because they know the person within that networking group know and trust me right. and they feel comfortable recommending me right. to their friends, to right. their family. Right. So you may not, you're not going into a networking, a networking group with the intention of I'm going to talk to Sally, Sue, right. Bob, right, and right, Ted right. and they're going to become clients right away right. because it doesn't happen that way. Right. It's not an overnight uh, sensation. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> right, right. It's not a fly. Um, talk to us about a feel for some of the types of groups. I and mean, we don't have to get the names, but like, do you do like a chamber? Do you do, I know you do women's group. Yeah. Okay. I do women in networking. Uh -huh. I've just joined the uh, Raleigh Chamber. Okay. Um, that meets downtown. Okay. Um, I don't think I knew that. Okay, good. Yeah, I just joined the Raleigh Chamber. Okay. Um, and I also do, and, and, and this is really not a networking group, but it's something that I do um, just sort of like offline because mm -hmm. I, I do believe in women's financial mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. I co-founded a group, Chicks Building Nest Eggs, with oh. a, with an estate planning attorney, okay. insurance agent, I did know that. and a financial planner. Yeah. And the focus of that group is educational, mm -hmm. is educational, but it gives us a chance to meet different mm -hmm. women in different walks of Give life. Give a plug for the website. What's the website? It's uh, chicks, chicks building nest eggs okay. dot com. Awesome, we got to get the plug. Okay, so <laughs> so all right, so you're doing you're doing a number of different things, um, and getting oh go and ahead I, and a um, triangle uh, the triangle power business mm -hmm. women's network. I've mm -hmm. also um, decided to join them as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I hope I'm not butchering the name. No, so. no, I'm sure you're fine. So one of the things that people ask me a lot is they say. How often should I market? You know, what should I do from a networking standpoint? Give us a feel for like either on a week to week or a month to month basis, this integration conversation, right? So you're going out and networking. Mm -hmm. How many times a week? Two, three, four, five? Probably um, not that much. Pro it's probably one to two times a week. Okay. Because the thing is, is that being, a, being a, an attorney, we have to be very intentional about our time. Right. So you That's build right. in networking in your, in, in your schedule uh, based on your caseload what you have to do for particular clients. Right. Um, I, I, what I do personally is that I allot my networking hours per um, per month. Oh, okay. To say, okay, this is... That's a is, good idea. Like a bank account. Exactly. That's a good idea. These are the amount of hours that I have to network per okay. month. Okay, okay. And based on my, uh, my caseload, mm -hmm. uh, some weeks may be heavy networking weeks, some weeks may be heavy working weeks. Uh, just for instance, this week is a heavy networking week. Mm -hmm. Next week... Less so. Yeah, it's okay. a heavy working week. Okay, that's a great way to think of it because I know for a lot of people, especially ones who are kind of, you know, maybe solo practitioners, yes. you know, one, two, three years or whatever, four yeah. years out, right? Maybe not more than that, but they're still trying to get the hang of, yeah. you know, this this networking and marketing and really what they're trying to do in my opinion is they're trying to get the hang of you know we were talking before how you work for most people listening have if they're on their own have usually worked for a big of you know a firm and that's fine there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that but what happens is they're trying to get organized between growing the practice yes. and working in the practice yes. you know do you have any you have any words of wisdom I love that bank account idea by the way of the networking you have anything else and I had a problem with that as well. Coming from a large firm, yeah. I did not have to network right. uh, because, of course, we had uh, the Rainmaker that mm -hmm. actually brought in the business and we were we worker were, bees. We were the worker yeah, bees. Yeah. And so going out on my own, it became, it, at first, was a, it was a struggle right. because I had to grasp and learn networking. Right. But uh, I soon realized at the beginning, that I needed to go to as many networking events. I needed to do as much initially. As, initially, yeah, just to get out. Yeah, yeah, just to get myself out there and get my name out there, mm -hmm. and so I can gain some name recognition. Mm -hmm. Because when I first started my practice, no, no one knew who I, mm -hmm. who I was. How, why would they? Exactly, because I was always in a little right. in a little office right. in a firm, right. working. Right. But the advice that I would give to uh, people that are Starting on the starting their own practice, mm -hmm. initially do the work, do the network, mm -hmm. do go to as many networking events as you can. Mm -hmm. um, start a blog, mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you have a 
a very, very professional mm -hmm. website, make sure your website is mm -hmm. up to par, do those things to, that give that will give you a powerful presence. And credibility. Exactly, and credibility. Because the more people you meet, mm -hmm. the more they're going to actually check check you out. Right. <laughs> they're going to Google. They're going to Google you. Right, they're going to right, check right. you. They're going to check your Facebook page. Right. They're going to check your LinkedIn page. Right. And then they're definitely going to check your website. Right. Um, and also check the website for spilling. I, I, oh one, yeah. New attorney I saw had a couple of misspellings <laughs> right on that. the website, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, you got that? You yeah, can't you have, have that. You can't have that. No, you can't have that. It has to be polished. It has to be professional because you are trying to build credibility." And you know, one of the points that you made, I want to get back to. Uh, there's two good points in there. First off, with the website professional, you know, you don't have to if you're just you don't have to spend five grand on a website anymore. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, you, you don't. I mean, I, when I started, if I started off. Uh, 2001, right, mm -hmm. right after 9/11, yeah. and I actually did, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, now you know a lot of our you know stuff that we do, even the the website that we've yeah. got for this practice building, it's a um, it's a WordPress site. I mean, I guess yeah. the cat's out of the bag a little bit there, but you know, it, you can go. There's a lot of places that you can go where you can get a professional mm -hmm. deal. Um, you know, it'll take you a little bit of a learning curve to do it if you want to do course. it yourself. Yeah. I just knocked it out myself because I was having problems with website developers. That's a whole other story. But that's a whole other story yeah. we don't need to get into. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I, I did that myself. And I think, you know, a lot of people tell me that it looks good. Um, so, yes, a professional-looking website because you have to look the part before you can actually be the part, right? Exactly. And the second point that I want to kind of br bring up that you brought up, kind of circle back to, you said start a blog. What yeah. a great point. People ask me, I've got lawyers, they come up to me and they say, well, they don't come up to me, but you know, in presentations, yeah. we talk about it. And people ask me yesterday, yesterday, well, what should I put on the blog? You know, how is that 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 works? Um, you know, and, and I always tell people, I mean, I don't know what your take on this is, but I always tell people when it comes to your blog or any type of whatever, we're talking a blog specifically, take a look at the questions that people are asking you. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and that gives you it gives you a uh, a point in area to highlight your expertise that's your exactly expertise right. in a certain practice area. That's exactly right. So you're about you know if you're having a, a tax controversy, talk about you know what is it that it looks like you know if the IRS sends me this, what do I need to do? If exactly. They, if they do that, what do I need to do? And if then, if then, and when you put the blog out, and you don't have to go crazy. That's the other thing. People think this blog is like you you know this book. 200 pages, you know, and they think a blog is like 50. And that's, you know, that's, I mean, right? That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you can put a blog out there, you can set it out, people can find you easily. I'll tell you what I've been telling clients. Don't even worry about, do if you don't want to write, if you don't want to write for whatever reason, you have a few options. You can do what we're doing now, which is like a video, yeah. you know, audio type deal. Um, you can get, you can just do a flat out audio and you know you can get those transcribed. Yeah. You can get those transcribed. Uh, website that I've seen is called Fiverr. Uh, it's www. Yeah, www.fiverr.com. It's F I V E. I think it's R R. dot com. Okay, and for and what it's kind of like an elance. I don't know if you've heard, but it's kind of like a you. Yeah. It's an offshore usually, um, you know, deal that you're able to for five bucks uh, as it relates to transcriptions. It's like fifteen minutes. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you know, you got a trial and error. Okay, but it's five dollars. And you send it off, and some guy in the Philippines sends it back. You know, three days later, and I mean, okay, and, and it comes, and you can put that onto your site. You wow. know what I mean? So you don't. My point, I guess, is that you don't have to just. If you, people say, "Oh, well, I'm not a writer," okay, well, I get the fact that you're not a writer, but there's other things that you can do. You know what I mean? So okay, good, good, good. So you've got your. We talked about your blog, your website, your offline marketing. Um, let's talk. We'll finish this up on this one. Let's talk referrals because that's something. So maybe you haven't been around. Maybe you haven't just got started. You have been around for a while, but some people they plateau. Talk to us about how you get referrals from people. Give us a. What does that What does that look like? Um. For me, it's to continually keep your prior clients uh, and your previous clients engaged. Mm -hmm. um, Christmas cards. Right. Um, you want to continue to let them know that 
I'm here. Right. So they can always keep you in their in, in, in their mind. Remember right. you Christmas cards, birthday cards. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not getting in any trouble there with that either, right? On no, the solicitation because, side. No, because they are former clients right. of yours. Right, right. They've already, they're not a, a new client. Right, they've already right. Been I just want to make that right, right, right. Um, and also, is if you do a great job, mm-hmm. people will talk and they're going to rave about you. Mm-hmm. And that, fortunately for me, that has always been the case. Mm-hmm. And um, people run into uh, their relatives mm-hmm. or their friends mm-hmm. and they're having similar problems. Right. And what they'll do is they'll say, well, you need to call Katie. She's great. Right. She'll take care of you. Right. Um, you know, it's it's all about the way that you engage that client that you have at right. this particular moment. Right. Um, you want to always stand out in the mind of that client right. because when you stand out, they're more likely to refer you to their friends, their right. family, um, anyone else, their their coworkers. Right. Because right. I've had some individuals that uh, um, that have referred me to coworkers. Um, even with other attorneys, network with other attorneys. Okay. Get together and talk with other attorneys because that could they can become a a, a great source right. of your referral business. Right. Right. Um, just recently, I had an, an attorney and I met her maybe about once or twice. Okay. She sent me a client in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Right. I, 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 I don't know where that change, is. Yeah, it's like an hour and a change <laughs> away from here. And um, they said, uh, and I, I I always ask, well. How did you hear about me? Right, right. And the uh, client, the client at this particular point says that attorney so and so said uh, you were really good at this, right. and they referred you. Right. So always remember that other attorneys, they're not always your competition. Right. They can be a great re- referral source as well. That is an awesome point, Katie. Because you know one of the things I say when I think marketing, when I talk marketing with people, is they think about it as, as they think sales and then client. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like it ends there. And I say that the sales, client, and then I say customer service, exactly, actually is for sale number two. Mm-hmm. Whether that's with this person linearly, or with other people, it, referral wise, if that's making sense, yeah. okay. So I think a lot of times people we think of service as this kind of oh well now we have them I guess we have to do it you know kind of thing. But I don't I don't I don't recommend that. They want to need to look at it as you've got the client, you're working on them, and you're moving them forward for the next one. Exactly. That's exactly. awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, thank you for having me. Hopefully, Brian. everybody got some good stuff out of this. You guys got some good stuff. Um, for Katie Lawson, my name is Brian Hilliard saying so long. Take care and thank you for your time.